guys, I've been so heavy in fight mode um, in the defense of um, my perceptions. I haven't been very vocal about, you know, much outside of spiritual things as it relates to, you know, um, those things that I used to share about before I got kind of stuck into the shadow space and any of the things that were of interest. So um, you can kind of tell where I've been, that I've been in the dark place. Um, so I just wanted to share an experience. I was thinking over something that happened a couple of days ago where I don't have many people that I call friends, and the ones that I do, they've been very heavy in um, what I have perceived as covering me and protecting me inside of me being unaware of myself. And to other people, it looks different, but what it does for me is remind me that each of us have our own unique story to tell in our path, and the things that you know intrinsically in your heart are for you and follow that so you know this uh, relationship that has been so controversial is one that actually takes me into a storyline that I think is very uh, important that it come to light because it kind of is one of the key strands of what has been my spiritual experience um, so I have a good friend that I connected with in Indianapolis and she would be what we would label as black and African-American uh, another topic to discuss you know at a later time as it relates to this identity thing because I think it has um, kind of helped confuse things in a way having these general labels without haven't done the self-investigation to no individual uh, characters and qualities and uh, how, how those work before you, you know, start to get new labels and qualities under uh, a, another label. So that's uh, not where I intended to go with this conversation in particular, but we were both identified as black women, and in the middle of this experience, I've been perceiving, you know, just the polarities of things, whether it be black, white, male, female, and I call that the checkerboard experience, um, that's the black and white Like maybe hazel or 
another perception what I perceive her in blackface. What is the significance of that? It's the way my mind works. Um, in that space, a lot of the conflict that I have faced spiritually has been on that polarized spectrum and it plays out on uh, multiple levels on so many aspects of life um, so the aspect of life of family I am polarized between bloodlines where I have maternal lines that connect me into uh, stories of Native American and Central European culture um, blended with narratives from men who have uh, Native American and very African centered uh, stories and heritages, heritages and perspectives. I am on the polarity of life as it relates to gender dynamics because in that polarity of family I found myself you know, walking life in resonance with certain ancestors um, to the disapproval uh, or resentment spiritually of others um, and I think it's because sometimes of the stories and the narratives that have not been told at the hands of the imbalance. So with me being in this position to see the meadow, I have nothing else to do than try to um, speak to the imbalance to rectify. Um, polarity um, caught inside of my shadow world I have been very heavily under uh, masculine energy and uh, there have been a lot of some stories that have uh, been shown to me about how this imbalance has come about through generations what that had to speak to as far as identity as well um, was important because that kind of broke down the initial polarity I talked about it put me in a place to have to really um, dig into the roots of you know um, my mother and learn who my father was and learn them about their people so it's really been this journey of learning where I've come from to untangle some of these shadows that I've perceived myself under because some of the positions that I found myself in seem to only be the inner workings of unresolved things in their stories, if that makes sense. Um, inside the polarity of right and wrong years inside of this experience and you realize that when you have identified with so many concepts in your environment that have not necessarily been dictated by your spiritual self attached to all of the polarities of things, all of the titles and labels and the distinctions and classifications that we adhere to uh, uh, 
so again, the, the biggest polarity I think that I'm having to navigate is the one of race, being a, a woman who would be labeled as a black woman, and very much so proud of where I've come from as it relates to what I've learned about myself, uh, the people that I see as reflections of me, uh, the attributes that I prize myself in having. So, you know, I, it's, it's been uh, a journey where I've had to learn to accept and love parts of me that I didn't know existed. And I think I've done that really well. Um, but inside that checkerboard, it had me to subscribe to things and agendas and people that didn't necessarily uh, fit the story that my soul had come to tell in particular. And because of that, what I had to express as a particular person from a particular set of people um, inside of a melting pot, it got drowned out because of the larger stories that, you know, uh, were made to be more important than what I was saying because it seemed like we all had this commonality where, you know, the majority rules the vote when in all actuality behind the scenes of my story has shown it's more of um, a scenario like one that we can find when we look into things that have um, come from teachings that come from religion and before I get into even speaking on what I'm about to share I want to make a disclaimer that um, I am in no way religious. This experience has taken me through religion. I spent several years in the uh, early 2000s as a member of a, a Christian church. As a teenager, I had years in and out of uh, a cultic church. always been a person who sought what felt most truthful to uh, my being. And that has taken me through, you know, exploring what I just shared with that religion. It has had me to, you know, explore things like meditation and yoga, which connect you into religions like Hinduism and Buddhism. Just in the journey of knowing myself, it's been me kind of just going very fluidly. I, I'm very fascinated with Native American culture because I feel like it it pieces together some of the story that I don't know about myself, as well as old world cultures in Canada uh, uh, or Africa. So uh, I've always been very broad in my interests of people because I felt always connected to people. And uh, I understand that now <laughs> at an entirely new level, but it's a polarity that I now have to express in my physical experience to understand that I've come to spiritually. And in that realm, I feel uh, a bit of anxiety because at the start of this experience, I felt evicted from those spaces that I now feel um, or eventually see that I'll have to come back into. And I actually, I still have work to do. I'm 36 years old. I still have great vision of um, myself and things outside of myself. So, you know, I when I lost fear in this experience, just maybe a, a, under a year ago, what I found myself is going back full circle into some of those spaces to try to rectify them or to explain where I now was. Um, and I think those made good bridges that uh, will hold, but 
right now, you know, that's not the case. And I'm, I'm still in this space of anxiety when I think of community and um, how to express this experience that I've just went through that involved them. Uh, uh, how do you re inject yourself into an environment where you feel like you, you know, you didn't serve and you were, you know, ostracized at one point? And the story that comes up to tell is uh, one of the Hebrew in Egypt. And again, I told you I'm not religious. I haven't opened the Bible in a, a while, which is probably a thing because I used to even in my not being religious, I still would uh, in my divination open the Bible randomly to see what it had to you know deliver in that moment so I still use it as a tool but even in you know that I've been in a position living uh, pretty nomadically where I haven't that's not an excuse because I know I got apps on the phone and whatnot but again either here or there I'm not going trying to align myself with anybody's perception of good or bad at this point I know I'm God and the devil but um, it's about how the children of seed of a certain father was able to hide out amongst the, the children of Egypt, the Egyptians, because they were of the same tone of skin, even though they had come from two different lines. So what I've found in my experience is a story that kind of unfolds like that, where um, spiritually, I was designed and created to fit a, a line of a story that connects to uh, the biblical Abrahamic lines. And the polarity in this is that I'm a part of a community that physically, at the look and label of black, wants me to subscribe to more African-centered traditions roles, stories, um, and because that is a part of who I am, there's also no problem with that, but the issue has been with the polarization of, of things in this experience, um, because with race, there comes cultural things. heritage for this place it would be the ability to uh, earn wealth get things quickly um, and that ability is built on the world's culture um, but very much off track um, they were hiding inside of this uh, group of people peacefully um, as long as they kind of assimilated uh, but they knew that that wouldn't be their final place because they were their own people and their values and their beliefs and their ways of living were not the primary way of doing things in that in that place but because they were exiled, they made the best of being able to rest in any place. 
these people. So that's my experience unpacking being black in America um, from a spiritual experience. Um, it goes into stories of bloodline from identity. And um, from that, we start to get into things that would be considered more tribalistic. And I, I speak all of this not in an effort to divide, because like I said, from being in a position to have seen both perspectives, um, the work I guess is, <laughs> it makes me laugh to, to bridge at this point. Um, learned from seeing this um, beautiful brown skinned woman I perceived as a black faced Ethiopian who again is another beautiful race of women is that even though we can appreciate each other's beauty and the commonalities of us there is definitely individual identities that need to be addressed um because in that melting pot place, it does not account for spiritual gifts, uh, spiritual legacies and heritages. Because in the assimilation of anything, what we lose 